Welcome to the Cynthia Nyamai Show. Now they say life is an interesting business and it's even more interesting when we live a life for others. Our guest today, and I have to say I'm excited, we have an international interview. He's well known all over the world and Africa as a leader and a man of the cloth. He left the military for ministry and he's given his life to others, especially in the rural areas, with great humility. That story coming up shortly. Thank you so much, Archbishop Kwashi, for joining us today. And Karibu to Kenya. Asante. <laughs> so, oh, so you know a few Swahili words. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> is, is Kenya, do we have a lot of similarities, Kenya and uh, Nigeria? Yes, plenty. Yes. A lot of it. Mm. Um, particularly um, from where I come from, yes. Jos Plateau. Yes. The weather is like um, like in Nairobi. Yes. And sometimes like in Limuru as well. Yes. It gets that cold. Yes. And there are other places of the highlands of Obudu. Yes. And um, as well as in Taraba State, mm. the highlands yeah, there yeah. can be pretty cold and yes. green and beautiful. Yes, but yes. it's very beautiful. Lovely. Joss is very beautiful. So uh, tell me a little bit about uh, oh. you growing up. Were you born in Joss? Did you, did you grow up there? I did. Yes. I did. I was born in a village mm. about um, uh, an hour and a half away from Joss. Yes. And um, I grew up in Joss as a little boy. Mm -hmm. I went from Joss to military school in yeah. Zaria. Yes. And then my life went on and on to the south of Lagos yes. before I came back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when did you decide that you want to get into ministry? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the decision was more than me. Yes. I was a trained soldier, mm -hmm. um, military school. Mm -hmm. I had uh, an ambition to continue in the army, yes. whatever God will have for me. Yeah. Uh, I had a big ambition of being a general. Yeah. Um, wow. But in between my graduation and the time of going for academy officers training, yes. I met the Lord. Mm. Um, a gentleman introduced me to a truck. Yes. And Mark, you I come from a Christian background. Mm. My mother was a pastor's child. Yes. My father was a church missionary teacher, mm. headmaster, yeah. way back 1936. Mm. So he's a very educated person. Yes. And I have always known prayer book, mm. you know, church and stuff. Yeah. So knowing the Lord Jesus Christ was not a thing I thought somebody would teach me yes. until I met this gentleman. Wow. This was in 75, 76. Yeah. And then that encounter changed my life mm, mm. and the ambition of accomplishing a life as an army officer or something just disappeared and I began to admire uh -huh. our pastor and his commitment he was an old man mm. but his contentment was what I was looking for yes. that I saw that attracted me to him yes. but not that I will be a minister mm. I started participating in church, youth, and all of that. Yeah. And everybody else in the church, mm. including my pastor, began to say, you, you will be a pastor. You will be a pastor. Wow. It took two years <laughs> yes. before that happened. <laughs> before you became a general for the Lord. <laughs> well, there you are. <laughs> so, but how was that transition, you know, from the army where uh, a lot of times people have an idea that, you know, people in the army are so hard, militarized and so on into now ministry. How was the transition? And even how did people take it? Uh, were there people wondering how can you have such a career change in your life? My classmates didn't believe it. Yeah. My mates, my juniors, and some of my seniors mm. didn't believe it. It was just unthinkable. Yes. My commandant, even he didn't, he, he had to send for me yeah. um, when I finally became a bishop. And we sat down with me and he asked me, he said, he said Ben, what happened? Because mm. everybody knew I was a, this kind of soldier yes. man that I am. Yes. My mother also didn't even, my mother's case was even the worst. Uh -huh. But my life had to speak. Yeah. I became soft-spoken, mm. um, gentle, but mm. still the energy was there. I wanted hard work yes. and, and all of that. Yeah. 
And my bishop was so kind. Uh, he tested me out to mm. send me out to the village. Yes. And, and God walked through me in mm. the village. Mm. I was able to start new churches, help the poor, dig wells, build mud brick buildings by myself yes. with my hands with the people. Yes. So he sent me for training. And uh, during the training, again, I was, the energy was there. I was this college driver for theological college. I was cutting the grasses. Mm. I was mowing the grass. I was digging the flower. I was always busy. I was yeah. playing basketball, football. Yeah. So, you know, my life was very busy. Yes. So I got ordained. And then people began to trust the fact that the energy that was in the army mm. is now transferred. Whereas clergymen were upper class people yes. who waited for things to be done. Yes. I, I don't have that luxury. Yes. So up to when I became a bishop, mm -hmm. I built my house. Yes. I've always been in the business of getting into the bush, doing stuff by myself. Mm. So I think the army trained me yeah. for this kind of service. Mm. And um, the other side of the hardness, mm -hmm. um, only my children will tell. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and during this, this time when you were, you know, uh, working out and uh, you're probably being tested if you're yeah. ready for yeah. becoming, to getting into ministry, yeah. was there one thing that particularly happened and you knew, yes, this is my calling, this is where I actually should be serving? Yes. Yeah. One, I found out mm -hmm. that whenever I'm in the rural areas, yeah. I am so happy. Mm. I'm at peace. Yes. No electricity. Yeah. Water was difficult. But mm. that gives me, that is what gave me confirmation of my call. Yes. And so for most of my ministry, mm -hmm. I'm a rural pastor. Yeah. Even as a bishop, my, my joy is when I drive my car and go out to the bush yes. and I teach people how to keep tidy their water, yes. their toilets, mm. and dig places. And I show them what to do, yes. and we can do stuff together, farming. Yes. And, 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 and I found that being a rural pastor is the wealthiest ever I have ever been. Wow. I remember Zonkwa yes. with my wife, and I'm married to some crazy girl called yeah. Gloria. Yes. She's more <laughs> mad than I am, by the way. Mm. We had goats, we had sheep, yes. we had cows, we had guinea pigs, mm. we had rabbits, yes. we were so wealthy. Mm. Well, we didn't have electricity and all of that, but we were okay. Yeah. Our children yeah. could eat. Mm. If you kill a rabbit today, it finishes today, <laughs> you know. So, yes, yes. no, 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 yes. I, I got that confirmation with my rural work. Yes. yes, it's interesting how you describe wealth because pastors are, these days are known to be very flamboyant, mm. um, especially in Nigeria. Some mm. of the pastors that we know around the world mm. who own private jets mm. are in Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, but you've decided to take, you're completely different from most pastors that I know in Nigeria, mm. uh, very humble. Uh, why did you decide to? Um, take that route and serve in a different way as a pastor. Now you must understand that when I was called in 1970, finally accepted for ministry in 1978, yes. the Nigerian Naira mm. was equivalent to the British pound. Wow. And in God's design, mm -hmm. I don't know how people, viewers, will take this description, but in God's design, yes. And providence. Mm. I come from a background I never knew I would ever need money yes. because it was there. Yeah. I mean, we went to England yeah. back and forth mm. as kids, young people. My generation would go fly, go for a weekend, come back. Mm. So that was the background I came from. I didn't come from a background where money was yeah. particularly significant. Yes. We had it. Mm. So I was moving away from yes. a background of wealth yeah. to where my contentment mm. is to mm. help people in the yeah. rural places, yes. which is where I still am. Yeah. So there's not a time I have ever felt any less mm. because people had money. Yeah. No. Mm. No. My contentment is with my animals. If you come to my house today, it's like a zoo. Yes. My horses, my goats, my sheep my ducks, my geese, mm. my ostriches, <laughs> my pigs. Yes. You know, that, that's, that's an amazing, that's my chickens, goats, and name it, they're all there. Yes. Pigeons, mm. or birds, 
I hated when people killed my birds. So I have trees, and early in the morning, I take their photographs. And yes. that, that's, that's my joy. Mm. And then, um, that's how my children grow up, yeah. to, to learn to look after. All the houses we've lived in, my children and I, we have labored to build together mm. with the builders. We carry the cement blocks, we do stuff. That, that's my joy. Yes. It's not about how much money and all of that. Mm, mm, mm. Um, I think it's people who don't, who didn't grow up with money, that yeah. think money solves problems. It doesn't. Yes. But why is there a need, especially in the church, to show uh, a lot of flamboyance? And even when I, I knew, yes, I, I, I read a little bit and I know you a bit, but if it was probably any other pastor coming from Nigeria, they would probably come in with bodyguards and would have an entourage and everything. Why is there that need in the church right now to show off material things and flamboyance? It's not a need. I think it's a created need, mm -hmm. but it's not a need. Yes. I still drive myself. I've mm. been driving myself yeah. anywhere, travel to anywhere, mm. and um, I've never felt insecure. Yeah. Um, several attempts on my life have been made, yes. but it still has changed nothing of me. Mm. When the time comes for me to die, I'll die whichever way it comes. Yeah. So I don't think it's a need. Mm. Um, but the flamboyance you are describing, I think there's, there's, there's a need to make people feel important. Um, and it's a choice. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, uh, I don't think I need that. Yeah. So I'm comfortable as I am, mm -hmm. and I'm grateful to God for who I am. Number one, I'm not tall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number two, I'm not handsome. <laughs> number three, uh, I, I just don't have what it takes for the importance of life. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy the way I am. And by the way, I never honestly yeah. ever thought that I would even be a bishop in the Anglican yes. Church because I am always a rural pastor. Mm -hmm. That's who I am. Yes. When I was made a principal of a theological college, mm -hmm. it was the first time I would be. Yes. I closed down the school for four weeks. Me and my students, yes. we built our classrooms, we built hostels, yeah. we built the vice principal's house. Mm -hmm. They're still standing today. Yes. So I don't, I don't think that I deserve any of those Yes. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Purposes, no. Yeah. Mm. Ivalia described your home a little bit. Mm. Uh, and I've seen your home. I haven't visited, but through YouTube. Oh, wow. uh, I watched a service that it's you were having home. Yes, with, your, with, with your with yes. your children. Yes. Uh, and I there were about uh, more than I think there were probably around 40, I, I counted mm. yeah, your children, mm. around 40 children. Yes. Uh, we'll take a short break, but after the break, I want to ask you, how did you end up with 40? And I hear sometimes 70 children, and how does that household uh, look like? Okay. That and more coming up short. <laughs> Welcome back to the Cynthia Nyomai show. We're talking to Archbishop Ben Kwashi, who's been telling us about how he grew up in Nigeria and eventually becoming from military to the pulpit, if, that, if I can put it that way. Yes. And we're just before the break talking about, uh, I brought up about your home, mm -hmm. where I watched a service of, of 40 children, uh, and sometimes there are even 70 children. Um, what made you decide to um, adopt and take up uh, that many children? It was not my decision. Mm. <coughs> um, I, 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 I does it have something to do with Gloria? It <laughs> does, it does. I mean, she's, you said it. She, you know, the thing is that I've stopped believing that, uh -huh. you know, when you marry these young girls, yes. African girls, especially uh -huh. African girls, uh -huh. they're very shy. Yes. And when you scream a little, they cry yes. in those early stages. Mm -hmm. And every time they go and bring you water, they kneel down, yes. they give you this. They, I yeah. don't believe that anymore. <laughs> I have been deceived. Because yes. I thought this girl was, you know, I told my friends, honestly, yes. I went to my best man. I said, uh, boy, Sam, hmm. I'm married to an angel. Yeah. He said, really? I said, how? I said, she doesn't even look at me. Yeah. Anything I say, she says, yes. yes. <laughs> and um, if I said, no, she would just tears. And yeah. I said, why? why is she crying? I don't know. <laughs> now I'm the one crying. <laughs> because after, <laughs> as soon as we got our first child, yes. she started bringing cousins, yes. younger brothers. And I don't mind it yes. two three yeah. five at most seven in yeah. the house sometimes 11 
and then we became 21 yeah. wow. then they all graduated yes. then our children grew up yes. then now she i went somewhere i've forgotten i came back and mm. i saw about 16 or 18 children in the house yes and i said oh wow who are they visiting mm. she said no they're our children i said <laughs> our what she said our children and she said i date of them are hiv i said no way wow. at that time our last son who's 22 now yes. was six years old yes. i said you cannot kill us and kill my son yes. it's not she wasn't listening yeah the girl I told you about is a totally different person now. Yes. She just said, Ben, give me money. Mm. I want blankets, I want sweaters, I want this. So I made the mistake, I gave her money. <laughs> so the whole living room, the, you know, the, when we come for prayer, you know, yes. little children, the we on the bed, the place is smelling. <laughs> I said, no, okay, let's build a place, yes. you know, an extension. Yeah. That was a bigger mistake. Once I built that, I traveled, came back, they were now 32. More children. <laughs> then we became 55, yes. then 64, yes. and now 72. Mm, mm. And she's adopted them yes. as our children. Mm. But the story didn't end there. Yeah. So now she extended it and started, they need school. Yeah. So she started school. So vulnerable children who have nowhere to go. Wow. And some of them even no parents. Some of them half orphans. Yes. Some of them full orphans. Mm. She packed them. Yeah. Now there are about 500 children that feed yeah. she feeds every blessed day including yes. sundays yes. she cares for we have a clinic yes. she runs it for them yeah and she schools them we have a first set of about 20 about 10 mm. who will be finishing university next year another set yes. are going into several colleges and polytechnics yeah. this coming year mm. no no this particular year yeah. so they are growing and increasing yeah i had to put an embargo because if i didn't <laughs> she will mess up the bishop's house <laughs> and she has helped me yes because I grew up in a background of selfish yes. self-centered yeah fairly affluent yes. background yeah people of influence yeah and she's taught me mm. to be selfless yeah and you even asked you know how did that come from uh, my my military background yes. and that I will now go back to the rural areas mm. and, and she helped me to look at Jesus's life yeah the simplicity mm. of Jesus, yes. the humility yes. of Jesus, yes. and the integrity yes. of Jesus and his ministry. Yeah. He doesn't need all flamboyance, That's doesn't true. need too much. Yes. A little banana food, we are okay. Yes. A little corn maize, mm. we are fine. Yeah. We don't have to eat meat, mm. we don't have to eat all those things. Yes. And now we are growing and we are living. Yeah. So that simplicity, that humility of mm. Gloria, yes. and, and the integrity has helped me yeah. and the mission that I'm, I'm, I'm going into. And whenever we go into the village, she knows what to do. Yes. I didn't know how to kill bed bugs. When yes. I see them, I run away. <laughs> She's a village girl. She yeah. said, come on, just come. Yeah. And she helps me. So yeah. I've learned a lot by getting married to, to Gloria and um, the, the, the worst thing that has happened to me now yes. is that she, she's just addicted to saving. She wants to save the whole world. Yes. And I told her, I can't do that. Mm -mm. Only she can, but I can't. <laughs> That's where we are. Yes. And, and some of the children that uh, you have both adopted mm. are from the north. Um, where um, there is Boko Haram yes. uh, and, and terrorism. Mm. How mm. is it uh, adopting a child who has seen um, so much? How do you then uh, bring them into a family where there is a bit more um, order? How is that transition? The, the beginning mm. is not easy yeah. for any child. Yes. If, even without terrorism, uh -huh. no children mm. having been raised in the backgrounds that they come and you adopt them, yes. that they find it easy yeah. and you, you also find it easy. It will never happen. Yes. But Gloria is an amazing mother. Mm. I, I had to warn her, you know, not too long ago. I said, listen to me, young lady. My mother is dead. Yeah. My grandmother is dead. I don't need any mother or grandmother now. So mm. talk to me like a husband. Yes. She has such a gift, mm. such a passionate gift of being a mother. Yeah. She can mother and wants to mother her husband. Can you imagine? <laughs> so she, she can take, she has capacity. Yes. And some of the children were said to be like autistic because yeah. of their trauma and all of that. Yes. They've healed, they're well. She has, she wakes up at 2 a.m. She wakes me up at 3, let's go and cook for these children. And then now she's trained them yes. because once you get to 10, 11, mm. you must begin to learn to wash dishes. Yes. So the regimentation that she has mm. 
By the way, she raised six her own. Yes. Not one has fallen into the hands of the devil. Mm. So it's the same principle she's using yes. with the 70 or more odd children yeah. that she's raising. And it is not easy. Mm. But because 6 a.m. it's morning prayer, 7 is breakfast, 7.30 yes. you go to school, mm -hmm. 2 o'clock uh, you've had your lunch, 1 o'clock, yes. 2 o'clock you must sleep, mm. 4 o'clock you must wake up yeah. and do chores or go for games, mm. 6 o'clock you eat, and then 8 o'clock closing prayers. That regimentation, yeah. in between, mm. Gloria has a police mentality. Yeah. She settles cases. She's mm. a fantastic magistrate. Yes. Let me quickly tell you this story. Mm -hmm. My little son, then he was a little boy, he came into the room. I came into the room. Only three of us at this time. Yeah. I came into the room. Everybody has gone to school. Mm. And I noticed my carpet is burnt, and part of my table is burnt. Yeah. And I knew straight away it was Gloria putting candle <laughs> on top of the table. Yeah. I was so mad. Mm. So as soon as she came in, I said, Gloria, I've warned you. Never, ever put a candlestick on the table. Put it on a saucer. And look at what has happened. Yeah. And she looked at me. She looked at our little son. And she said, Ngamanen, did you use a matches or did you use a lighter to mm -hmm. burn the table? <laughs> this is a boy. I had asked him, who did this? He says, I don't know. How did it happen? He said, I'm not the one. Yeah. As soon as the mother said, Ngamanen, tell me, was it a lighter or a, a, or, or a yeah, matchstick? Yeah. He said, mommy, I use a lighter. <laughs> I, I was I was so dumb. Stupid. She's a high court judge. Yeah. She knows every case, so mm. nothing is hidden behind her. Yeah. And then at some prayer points, mm. the way she will pray, mm. some of these children start crying. Yeah. And um, by my training as a pastor in counseling, mm. they are now bringing out the the pains of their their mother they saw who yes, was slaughtered yeah. or, or or the their village that was burnt down their grandmother that was killed their mm. father was they they cry and cry and cry yeah. and cry and we cry together yeah. and we we love them not by giving them things yes. we don't give things yeah. we just love them mm. and, and and care for them and feed them and suddenly you see a new boy mm. as they cross 12 14 they suddenly see an energetic man or or young girls pretty girls yes. you know and she cuts their hair by the way mm. very ugandan and east african life yeah. everybody cuts hair <laughs> yeah. until they grow yes. and go to university then they can do whatever they like to mm. do with their hair so all of those I, I i give credit to this girl called gloria yes wow mm. maybe she should also i'm just thinking the way you're talking more about her i'm mm. like Maybe she's actually the archbishop. <laughs> she is. You better believe it. Oh, yes. I've stopped believing men now being anything. It is the women. <laughs> it's a mistake, I tell young men. Yes. The only thing you will do in your life, mm. please marry a girl you love. If you do that, you're safe forever. Yes. She will look after you mm. and look after your children. Yes, yes. Uh, talking about uh, Boko Haram and in the north, uh, I've seen a lot of times openly talk about the persecution that Christians are going through mm. uh, in the northern side mm. of Nigeria. Mm. And not so many people want to openly talk about it, mm. uh, even media, because of the repercussions. Mm. Why, do you, why are you so bold and courageous, and why do you feel like there is a need to talk about it? No, it has nothing to do with courage. Mm. I'm a very big coward. The thing is that you... You have to say the truth. Yes. My calling does not allow me mm. to lie because God does not bless lie. Yes. So I have to tell the truth. Now, when you tell the truth, the government in power mm. anytime is looking at political exigencies yes. of the issues. Mm. So whatever security reports come in, no matter how genuine, yes. they're looking at their own votes. Yes. So they give it they give the crisis a name mm. that those of you who are being killed, it doesn't look like what you're talking about. Yes. For example, they, they, they even metamorphosed yes. when, when the Fulani killers are killing yes. us. Yeah. They said, no, it's clashes. Yes. Like 500 people are sleeping. Mm. They are mad, slaughtered like chicken. Yes. Where does clash arise? Mm. So I have to tell the truth. Yes. Boko Haram are killing purely at the beginning purely Christians, mm. completely churches destroyed. And they say, no, it's some hoodlums. These are not hoodlums. Yes. Hoodlums are armed. Mm. 
They are, they are armed. These guys are armed. They are not hoodlums. Mm. So all of those is the reason why I have to tell the truth. It may cost my life, but I have to tell the truth. If Christians, on the other hand, are killing Muslims, again, I have to tell the truth. Yes. So either way, I have no option but to tell the truth. So it's not particularly about boldness. It's more about governments in Africa, mm. as long as they are not accepting the truth, as long as they are evading justice, mm. as long as they are not interested in truth and justice, mm. they will always plunge their people to bloodshed. Yes. All the time. Yes. There's no escaping. There's no amount of money you pump into a situation where there's no truth. Mm. There's no amount of money you pump into a situation where you are not interested in justice and expect anything better. It will never happen. The European nations were built on the foundations of truth and justice. Mm. Any nation yeah. that has cared for its people, mm. it's because it looks at you yes. and says, excuse me, you come from this tribe. You're my tribe, but you're wrong. Yes. You come from the other tribe. Mm. Let's look for how we can share equity. Yes. And please forgive and you forgive. Mm. Then politics becomes joyful. Mm. Then governance becomes a lot easier. But without that, anytime there's no truth, there's no justice. Corruption festers. Bloodshed increases. Yes. Nobody's at ease. And over time, criminals take over. Mm -hmm. But is it possible to have that kind of, of government? In the last Nigerian elections, we uh, even saw a born-again Christian fella run for, for presidency. But you wonder, is it possible to have, especially in Africa, a corrupt, um, free government and a government that cares for the people? Oh, yes, it's possible. It's very possible. Mm. The, the, the reason why it's becoming more and more difficult, is that people hide under the canopy of religion and claim that because of their religion, they are going to wipe out corruption. No human being, does, not even in the church. So if you want to wipe out corruption, just stand on truth. Whether you believe in Jesus or not, God will bless you. So if you take the line of truth, remember, all truth is God. Mm. God is truth. He is the light. Yes. And when now you are a born-again Christian and choose to stand for truth and justice, even unbelievers will vote for you. Mm. Mm. It may take time, but they will. Yes. Uh, uh, we've seen attempts uh, on your life um, a number of times. Is, does that become a bit... Um, discouraging and do you feel like you know maybe I should do less and, and talk less <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. no 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 mm. I don't talk just because I want to talk yes I talk out of a conviction mm. and passion mm. and at that point I'm helpless mm. I just have to talk and lead the people regardless of who is involved yeah. um, that it just, it's, it's not my choice really it's God who chose me mm. So I'm always under that, um, that, that canopy. Yes. So I'm careful. Yeah. And many times people have said, you've not spoken, why should I, if mm. the Lord has not asked me? Yeah. But when the Lord asks me to speak, mm. oh sure I will. So the attempts on my life are immaterial. Yes. And um, nothing's going to happen unless God allows it. Y yes. Mm. Uh, we, we've seen uh, a number of um, men, and I'll call them fathers, mm. Um, fathers in the area of uh, entrepreneurship and even in ministry we had like T.D. Joshua and, and many other men uh, of the cloth um, pass away since last year this year um, and that it feels like our fathers are going they're mm. leaving us what does this mean for the generation coming after our generation what role should we be playing right now and even for our fathers what role should they be playing at this time in 2000 president obasanjo made me chairman of the advisory council for mm. youth yes so it was an a grade advisory council not paid not politics mm. but i was just an advisory council and i went around all the universities primary schools secondary schools tertiary institutions and we found out that in the youth service scheme, there was 120,000 young people graduate 
in the youth service scheme that year. Mm. So I was interested in how many of them went to primary school the same year, yes. and why are there only 120,000? We found out in the year 2000 that 8 million kids went to the same primary school, mm. but only 120,000 have graduate certificates. Yeah. We went right back to nursing, diplomas, polytechnics, and we found out another 300,000 mm. graduated. So mm. all in all, we were able to account for 300,000 of an age range at that time, yes. between 24 and 26 mm. and 28 that left primary school. Yeah. Only 300 mm. have certificate that are employable yes. and that can be employed. Mm. In other words, 7.3 million mm. same age people are unemployable, will never be employed yes. in Nigeria, yeah. year 2000. I went back to the church. Mm. I said, we're in trouble because at yes. that time, yeah. 65% of Africa was under 35. Yes. Now it is 70. Yeah. Which means if those who have do not share with those who do not have, yes. those who do not have are going to overrun Africa mm. very soon. Yes. We see it in South Africa. Yes. Just for no reason, they got up one day yeah. and are looting every ch yeah. shop. Yes. So the church is in trouble. Mm. I mentioned it to the church in Nigeria. I'm not sure people heard me. Yeah. But from that time on, I do not recruit people into the mission field who mm. are over 30 years of age. Yes. The reason is I want to pass down to the next generation. But you see, the church is not interested in doing that mm. or the community is not interested because those age range, they have nothing to contribute. Yes. They don't have money. Mm. They don't have anything. Yeah. So they only use them as thugs and as you know, errand boys and house kids yes. and clean your plates and so on. Mm. But now, as drivers, mm. they are now raping the children yes. of the house. They are, they are taking away children. They are sacrificing them. Yes. They're doing all kinds. Because the older generation, mm. we don't have a kind heart yes. to share with the coming generation. Mm. That's only one of the problems. Secondly, my generation, we saw Nigeria where children of the poor went to school for free. Mm. Now there's so much money. We're not thinking of children of the poor. Yes. Rather, we're sending killers to kill the poor. Mm. And the children are running. And some of them are not captured within areas where we can love them and care for them. And they are running away with anger. Yes. They're going to come back 20 years later. That's true. They're going to be very strong. Mm. It's happened around the world. Mm. You kill people now, their children run away. Yeah. They'll come back. And they'll come back with an unforgiving spirit. And United Nations can speak all the language they want. <laughs> These guys are going to massacre generations. Yeah. So it's better now for the church especially mm. to begin to look at the younger generation and pass on to them the gospel we received, the fervent gospel, the word of God. No matter how people have rejected the word of God around the world, mm. I tell you the truth, in the last 45 years, only the Bible has helped me to navigate all the problems of the world and to help people who listen to me, who care, to navigate through their problems as well. And I'm telling you, it has worked. Yes. And do you think that uh, there is hope for Africa? You, your job allows you to travel a lot um, around Af Africa. Is there hope? There is hope. Mm. Let me tell you this, Cynthia. There was a man called Ajay Crowther. He was a slave. He was captured and released in 1824, baptized in 1825, became a fantastic teacher. Yes. And his heart was to come to Nigeria. God opened doors for him in 1841. Mm. He came back home in 1842 and began his ministry as an evangelist. 1843, he was ordained as mm. a priest. Mm. Now, mark you, there was no customs, no immigrations, no Nigeria, no government. This man established schools in Lagos, in Boni, in Lokoja, in most, he was heading up north yes. before he died in 1891. Mm. One man, he brought cassava, he brought plantain, he brought commerce, he brought rice, he brought white traders mm. to Africa, to Nigeria. Single man, a Nigerian. One man did that. Yeah. 
Queen Victoria allowed him to become the first African Anglican bishop, 1864, and he did more. Yeah. One man. There is hope. I don't know who that man is in Kenya mm. or South Africa or mm. in Uganda yes. or any nation, mm. but God takes one man. And because there's God, I have hope. Thank you so much, Archbishop, for joining us today. It's a great pleasure. <laughs> I wish we had more time and talk to him, but I'm so glad that he left the military. From the military, <laughs> to the pulpit and we can see the impact that he has had around the world. Sometimes we make decisions that might not be very popular, but they will later make a great impact. See you next week. Thank you for watching the Cynthia Nyamai show. Now remember to like, share and subscribe and you can also leave a comment we want to hear from you.